So to finish up our structure of membranes series on membranes and transport, we're going to be talking, uh, the last point about the fluid mosaic model um, is sort of the overall driving point is the, obviously the functions. We have to figure out what the whole purpose of the fluid mosaic model is. What functions does it sort of relate to? How does the structure that we talked about, the fluidity and the mosaic pattern relate to functions of cell membranes themselves? Well, first and foremost, many functions of the cell membrane are sort of due to the fact of this fluid mosaic model, but some of them that we'll be talking about today include transport. When we say transport, we mean transport of goods. The cell is a busy city. It's a busy environment that has to transport things. The membrane and the fluid mosaic model of representation helps the transport of things, let's just say. In addition, the fluid mosaic model has enzymatic activity within it. That's all you need to know. It's just a function. I'm not going to go into any more details. In addition, we have signal transduction that occurs here. And if we remember signal transduction all the way from our very first lecture on biology and learning, this is just connections form. And those connections form between cells. The signal that happens from this cell to this cell occurs directly via membrane connection. And that's just sort of a function that we also see. In addition to that, we see cell to cell recognition. This is something you'll learn more about uh, when we go into bio 2 and enzymes, cell to cell recognition, I'll say. It's another big important function. Another important function is the intercellular joining occurs at cell membranes. So some cells are very densely packed together because their cell membranes are right next to each other like this. This is an example of plant cells. Plant cells have very tightly knit together uh, cell membranes, and this is intercellular joining as a result of the cell membrane and the fluid mosaic model. I'll, let me just rewrite this a little bit neater. Intercellular joining. It's a little unclear. There we go. Intercellular joining. And lastly, we also have the attachment to the cytoskeleton. Or, so let me write that down, attachment to cytoskeleton. Or, simply speaking, this is just the way that the membrane or the cell itself attaches to its environment. Let's say that cell has to attach to a bone. That bone cell is going to attach to the bone material, which is calcium because of the cell membrane. So this is the, these are all of the functions of the fluid mosaic model of the cell membrane. So it's just many, many functions of membranes, very simply defined as these four or five functions that we have here. Just know that the fluid mosaic model influences a ton of different functions, and these are just some to name. And the very last thing we'll talk about in terms of structure of membranes is the idea of carbohydrates. So carbohydrates, if you remember, were a part of biological molecules. They are a very important biological molecule. They are also found, guess where, on the cell membrane. The cell membrane also contains carbohydrates in two forms. We can have either glycoproteins or we can have glycolipids. And where in this, these two words do you see the carbs? The glyco. Glyco referring to like glucose or sugar. Remember, carbohydrates are just sugars. So we have sugar proteins or sugar lipids, sugar fats. This is simply defined as, and all you need to know is a polysaccharide combined with a protein is a glycolipid. This will be seen on the cell membrane. I highly suggest looking at a figure in your textbook to show this. And also glycolipids are simply a polysaccharide plus a what? Obviously a lipid. Polysaccharide and a lipid. So, um, very important function they serve is uh, recognition, but we don't need to go into those details. Overall, now we've finally completed the structure of cell membranes. In our next couple of flowcharts, we'll be looking at the transport part of this lecture. So now that we understand what a cell membrane structure is and all these functions that it encompasses, we can now finally look at how those, fun how those structure 
goes hand in hand and gives us the functions of specifically transport.